Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering video. So, well it's a couple of weeks now actually, a couple of weeks ago the new Commander product came out. Unfortunately as my uh, five Commander decks had just arrived I was then taking a trip to Toronto which I'm, I'm now back from and uh, managed to catch up with stuff and so now is an excellent time to start opening this product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all five decks, not, not in a single sitting, I'm going to spread them, spread them out over several days. Um, and we'll open these up, see what's in them. I know a lot of people are real excited about this particular product. One thing I've tried to do is, is avoid looking at the deck list prior to this in too much depth. I, I know how the new uh, Commander product sort of works in terms of some new things they needed to do to make the the ability to do four colours uh, a bit a bit easier and to open up you know new design space. So all as um, well as with all the Commander products previously, all the decks have a sort of name that they've been given. This one's called Invent Superiority. And again, there's there's five of these decks, uh, and they're they're all four color this time round. So this one, and we're going to be running through as we do the videos in uh, in Wuburg order. So this one is white, blue, black, red. Okay. So next one we do is going to be blue, black, red, green, and so on. So this is. Brea Ethereum Shaper. So Brea Ethereum Shaper is a legendary artifact creature human for 4-4. Now what we're going to do is once we open the deck up, um, we'll look at this in a bit more detail. Um, but just looking at this card you can see it sort of cares about artifacts and produces um, 1-1 one, one blue top to artifact creature token and it's got a modal ability which sort of maps back to its its color identity these are these are 100 card decks not, not surprising no no surprise there and um i'll just have a look at the back here so it says enter the fray stand victorious choose your commander and lead your deck to victory in this unique multiplayer magic format Mix and match the strengths of different colours like never before to outwit and overpower your foes. Now one of the problems Wizards apparently had putting this together is that building um, four colour commanders, four colour identity commanders, is pretty tricky. So they managed to do one for each deck. And then beyond that, they were looking at other ways of achieving that using a different way or a different approach, different design approach. There's a very good article on this which you can track down on the web which sort of goes through the different things that they thought about trying. And what they ended up um, to, to expand the design space was the idea of using something called Partner. Now Partner just basically says that you can have two commanders if both have Partner. So what this then allows you to do is to take, say, two two color commanders or a one and a three or a three and a one so each of these decks have in addition to the, the, the sort of lead commander if you like have three additional cards that you can use as commander that will still with the help of the, this partner mechanic will still help you achieve a four color deck so they still be, still all the all the cards in the deck will still be valid cards under under the sort of commander design rules which connects to the commander's color identity and how it works in this deck is you've got a Kiri which is red white uh, Silas which is blue black so those two can be combined can be partnered to give you red right blue black or what you can do is you can combine bruise with Silas. Again, red, white, blue, black. Now, beyond that, beyond the deck, of course, what you can do is use any of these commanders unpartnered. But if you did do that, obviously, in the case of a Kiri, you would have to be a red, white deck. 
in the case of Bruce, also red, white, and Silas would be blue, black on there. But the appearance of the partner identity raises something else really interesting. Was that if you're in a play group where you basically just play by your own rules, you have your own house rules, there's nothing to stop you coming up with new partners outside the partner ability. And of course, as we go through the decks, there's going to be three of these partners in each deck. So you do have already plenty of design space for designing new decks that partner up those. But within a like a closed play group, there is nothing stopping you from agreeing other legendary creatures that could be partners. And I think that opens up an even more interesting potential design space. And I'd be really interested in, you know, once I do this video, once I finish these videos, I'm going to certainly go away and look at our other, you know, red, white and blue, black legendary creatures that might complement this deck. Maybe there's some in here already. I, I don't know. I've not deliberately not gone through the whole deck list. So as it has, says here, explore multiple angles of attack across four colours by combining two commanders with the new partner ability or spearhead a more traditional offence with a powerful four colour commander, which is the one, like, what I would call the lead commander. Invent superiority. As I've said, the name of the deck. Uh, here's the backstory. So Brea Ethereum Shaper learned to command powerful works of artifice on the Esper Shard of Alara. Her mastery of lightning and expertise with Ethereum enable her to unlock the full potential of her creations and overwhelm her foes. <clears throat> so it's nice they've got a tie in there, you know, means that we can be on the lookout for maybe cards that were, were in the uh, Shards of Alara block or cards from the Shards of Alara block that might work in this deck if we wanted to start modifying up. In terms of contents, just to recap, as this is the first unboxing of this particular set, uh, 100 card commander deck featuring four foil commanders. So we're back to a full complement of, of the, the sort of four foils. A foil oversized card, 10 double sided token cards, deck storage box, deck strategy and a magic quick reference card. I'm trying to remember actually whether um, whether you know all of the commanders being in four was something they maintained through all the other decks I, I just can't remember off the top of my head okay so let's get this open and um, see what's inside I'm pretty excited to see what's in here for lots of different reasons um, you know you've got the the issue of color fixing through artifacts that'd be cool to see what sort of artifacts they've got in here and also what sort of land they've, they've done and, and how much just basic land that might be here, if, you know. Okay. So there we go, our nice foil brow. I'm just going to move that through the light so you can get the full, full extent of the foiling there. This is a sort of introduction to Commander. Insert here. So we've got a bit about the backstory of Brea, and also in turn, Akiri, Bruce, and Silas Wren. How to play a Commander game. How to use your Commander. And then an actual deck listing here. It doesn't give the original source set for, for some of these. Now, of course, some of these are going to be new cards. Um, but in some Magic products, they actually list where the, the cards come from. They have starred uh, the new cards for the release. And any new cards that are in these decks, and again, it's worth me while me just highlighting this thing as is the first of the batch of these videos. Um, they're going to be legal for play in vintage and legacy formats. So 
so no doubt legacy and vintage players will be scouring these decks to see if there's anything super broken in them and there's our little actual quick reference for the general rules of magic so let's have a look in here my guess is that they'll put all the commanders at the top right so let's go through Brea properly here so Brea Ethereum Shaper white blue black red for a 4-4 legendary artifact creature human when Brea Ethereum Shaper enters the battlefield create two 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying two generic mana sacrifice two artifacts choose one so it's got a modal ability Brea deals three damage to target player target creature gets minus four minus four until end of turn and you gain five life now one of the interesting things with these four color generals is just looking at them and seeing how their abilities sort of map onto their color identity so you can see this thing's creating thopta tokens their, their artifacts um, you've probably seen cards in magic that, that do this and a lot of the, those cards are, are blue so you've got a very blue ability in there. Sacrificing something, that's a very black thing. Um, sacrificing resources, i.e. creatures, life, um, something other than mana is, is you know, what black does well. Also, we've got direct damage here. Brea deals three damage to target a target player. That's a very red thing. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. There's loads of black cards in Magic which um, do that. You know, they'll do minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, and so on. A very popular um, effect on a black card, be it a spell or attached to uh, creatures. And you gain five, li five life is the final mode ability. You can only choose one of these. And that's something that's very much in the uh, the white mana camp. So moving on to the, the alternate partner commanders here, we've got Akiri Line Slinger, a red-white 0-3 legendary creature, core soldier ally. First Strike and Vigilance. Akiri Line Slinger gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control. And it's a partner card, so you can partner with the uh, with with another commander Bruce Tal Boris Herder two red white legendary creature human ally whenever Bruce Tal Boris Herder enters the battlefield or attacks target creature you control gains double strike and lifelink until end of turn so not surprising he has partner there and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, one blue black, two two legendary artifact creature human. With Death Touch, whenever Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, deals combat damage to a player, choose target artifact creature in your graveyard. You may cast that, that card this turn. And of course, partner again. So there are our alternate commanders which we can pair up. And if as long as we pair up either Bruise and Silas or um, Akiri and Silas we are not you know breaking the color identity of our commander deck we've got some tokens in here got a thopt token a bird token and you'll notice these are double-sided so there's a thopter and a horror a bird and a mere token another bird and a mere bird and a mere They've got quite a few tokens here. I thought to a goat. Thought to goat. Thought to germ. Well, wow. thought to germ. Thought to emblem. Bird mere. Okay. So we'll go through these. What I'll probably do is. Although rarity in a commander deck seems like a bizarre thing because, of course, it's not like boosters. Um, what I will do anyway is, is fully read through the uh, the rares and the mythics um, and really anything that stands out which might have an unusual ability on it. 
So mere retrievers in here. Vidalcan engineer. Ethereum sculptor. Bayful Strix, so you can recognize a, a number of these if you're familiar with uh, the history of magic, you'll recognize a number of these uh, cards. Trinket Mage. So we're going to have a lot of cards here that care about artifacts or hunt down artifacts, I suspect. Historical. It's got some burst on it. Sanctum Gargoyle. Ever Flowing Chalice. Skull Clamp. Soul Ring. Again, you'll see a number of classic Commander cards. So Skull Clamp, Soul Ring. Both very good cards in Commander. End up in a lot of decks. Dispeller's Capsule. Executioner's Capsule. Cranial Plating. Felwar Stone. Another classic Commander card. Ikar Wellspring. So we'll see a, probably a lot of uh, artifacts here which could be usable in a number of different decks. But obviously at home in a an artifact deck as well because of the synergies that they're going to create. Mycosynth Wellspring, Swiftfoot Boots, Thopter Foundry, Commander Sphere, Loxodon Warhammer, Grip of Phyresis, so two blue, gain control of a target equipment, then create a zero zero black germ creature token and attach that equipment to it. So germ tokens, I think, were introduced around, I'm trying to think which block it would be. Um, I think it was the same block where there was sort of poison in. Scars are mirrored in block. Ancient evacuation. Oh, sorry, Ancient Excavation. You can see this has got land cycling on it. Very useful um, in a, you know, a four colour deck where you've got lots of sort of land related um, and mana related fixing problems where, you know, you might have too much land or too little land and things like land cycling um, help out, you know, basically where you might not need this card. You can discard it, go search for basic land. Trial and Error, Whip Flare, Parting Thoughts, Migratory Root, Armory Automaton, Magus of the Will. So Armory Automaton, actually I didn't pick up on that, is, is a rare uh, artifact creature construct. When armory or automaton enters the battlefield or attacks, you may attach any number of target equipment to it, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. Makes the will, also rare, 2 and a black, 3-3, three, three. creature human wizard, 2 black tap, exile magus of the will until end of turn. You may play cards from your graveyard. If a card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile that card instead. Fairy artisans, 3 and a blue, 2-2, two, two, creature, fairy artificer. Flying, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, create a token as a copy of that creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types, then exile all other tokens created with fairy artisans. Curse of Vengeance, single black, enchantment or a curse, enchant player. Whenever enchanted player casts a spell, put a sprite counter on Curse of Vengeance. Put a, sorry, put a spite counter on Curse of Vengeance. When enchanted player loses... When enchanted player loses the game, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of sp spite counters on Curse of Vengeance. Of course, that makes more sense in a multiplayer game. Coastal Breach, six and a blue sorcery, Undaunted. This spell costs one less to cast for each opponent. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Obviously very much at home in a multiplayer game space. Another legendary creature here, Sidiri Galvanic Genius, one blue black, two two legendary creature human artificer, target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost until end of turn, one and a black target artifact creature gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. 
He's a sworn adjudicator, a mythic uh, four and a blue four four creature uh, artifact creature, Vidalcan Knight with flying. It's got a couple of um, activated abilities on it. One white black destroy target creature or enchantment. Two blue untap ether sworn adjudicator. Soul of New Phyrexia six for six six artifact creature avatar trample for five permanents you control gain indestructible until end of turn um, and for five exile soul of New Phyrexia from your graveyard permanents you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Hellkite Tyrant four and two red. A 6-5 creature dragon with flying and trample. Whenever Hellkite Tyrant deals combat damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts that player controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 20 more artifacts, you win the game. So interesting alternate win condition. Shroom's in here, Shroom the Hegemon. Oh, three white, blue, black. Legendary artifact creature Sphinx with for 5-5. Fi uh, five, five. Flying. When Sharoom the Hegemon enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Got a planeswalker here in the form of Duretti, so Duretti Scrap Savant. Three in a red, three loyalty. Plus two is discard up to two cards and draw that many cards, as so like Ramaging. Minus two, sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return target artifact creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it's minus 10, you get an emblem, so that's where the emblem comes in. With whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return the card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Chief Engineer, one and a blue, one three artifact spells you cast have convoked. And that's a Videl creature, Videlcan Artificer. Slowballed Goblin Tinkerer, one and a red, one two, legendary creature, Goblin Artificer. Sacrifice a creature, target artifact, gains indestructible until end of turn. Shimmer, Shimmer Mir, 3 for 2-2 two, two with flash. You may cast artifact spells as though they had flash. Master of Ethereum, 2 and a blue, star star, artifact creature of a Delcan Wizard. Master of Ethereum, power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control. Other artifact creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Hannah Ship's Navigator, uh, white... One white, blue, one, two, legendary creature, human artificer. For one white, blue, and tap, return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Solemn Simulac comes in the deck. Four for a two, two, artifact creature, Gollum. When Solemn Simulac enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Jaw Kadeen, the Prevailer. Three red, white, five, four, legendary creature, human warrior, with first strike and metal craft. So creatures you control get plus three, plus zero, as long as you control three or more artifacts. Sphinx summoner, three blue, black for three, three artifact creature, Sphinx, with flying. When Sphinx summoner enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. Godo Bandit Warlord, 5 and a red, 3-3, three, three, legendary creature, human barbarian. When Godo Bandit Lord enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card and put it into the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. When Godo attacks for the first time each turn, untap it, and all samurai you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Mere battle spheres in here, so this is 7 colourless, 4-7 sorry, seven generic mana, four, seven, artifact creature, mere construct, when mere battle sphere enters the battlefield, create four, one, one, colorless mere artifact creature tokens, whenever mere battle sphere attacks, you may tap X, untap the mere you control, if you do, mere battle sphere gets plus X, plus zero, until end of turn, and deals X damage to defending player. Hellguy Igniter, five and two re red, five, five, flying haste, one and a red igniter, a Hellkite Igniter gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Filigree Angel, five, two white and a blue for an artifact creature Angel. Four, four, flying. When Filigree Angel enters the battlefield, you gain three life for each artifact you control. Bone Horde is in there. Uh, four, four, an artifact equipment. 
it's a living weapon, so this is where the germ token comes in. When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a zero zero black germ creature token, then attach this to it. Equip creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards and equipped for two. Never no never I can never say this. <laughs> Nevin Irel's I think that is Nevin Irel's disc four artifact. Never an Isle's disc enters the battlefield tapped. One tap. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Trading post is in here. I, I had a feeling it might because of the goat tokens. Um, I love this card. Uh, four for an artifact. W one tap, discard a car. You gain four life. One tap, discard. Pay one life. Create a zero one white goat creature token. Um, this is great in goat tribal, by the way. Um, one tap, sacrifice a creature, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, and one tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. Blink Moth Urn, for five you get an artifact, and at the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colourless to his or her mana pool for each artifact he or she controls. There's loads of classic cards in here. Read the runes. X and a blue. Draw X cards. For each card drawn this way, discard a card unless you sacrifice a permanent. Trash for treasure. Two in a red sorcery. As an additional cost to cast trash for treasure, sacrifice an artifact. Return target artifact creature from your graveyard to your battlefield. Beacon of unrest. Three and two black sorcery. Put target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle Beacon of Unrest into its owner's library. Open the vaults for onto white sorcery. Return all artifacts and enchantment cards for all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Oh, I love this card. Phyrexian Rebirth. Two and two white. Destroy all creatures then create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. So now we move on to the mana base. So here's how we're going to fix for these four colour decks. Exotic Orchard. Tap add to your mana pool one mana of any colour that land an opponent controls could produce. Grave Upheaval, Upheaval is in here. Four um, black red sorcery. So we've got, let's just we just got that land, then we go back to sorceries here. Put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control against haste. It's also got land cycling on it. And then here's our planes. One, two, three, four. So five basic land planes. Five islands. Four swamps. I love the artwork on this. And four mountains. Arcane Sanctums in here. So Arcane Sanctums enter the battlefield. Tap, tap, add white, blue, black. Ash Barons. Tap, add colourless to your mana pool. And it's got basic land cycling on it. Azurus Chancery is in here. So this, what this does, um, enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, you have to return a land you control to its owner's hand. But it taps for white and blue. And then there's Boros Garrison, so that's the red-white version. Buried Ruin taps for colourless, and for two, tap it, sacrifice Buried Ruin, return artifact creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Obviously very useful in an artifact heavy deck. Command Tower's in here. Obviously makes a lot of sense to have something in it that you can add to your mana pool one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. Crumbling Necropolis. So this is this is three colour but for uh, blue, black, red. Dark Steel Citadel is an indestructible land, artifact land that generates colourless mana. Dimir Aqueduct, uh, the, the bouncing land for blue black in uh, you know similar to the one we saw a moment ago evolving wilds great way of fixing sacrifice evolving wilds just search your library for a basic land card and put it into your, your battlefield tapped and shuffle your library but obviously it's only going to hunt down your basic lands 
Mystic Monastery and about full tapped and this does blue red white Nomad Outpost so you can recognize these from Khan's block uh, red white and black Ractus Conarium so another one of these uh, bounce lands that uh, when it when it does go active so to speak you get two colors in this case it's black red Rupture Spire into the battlefield tapped uh, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one but once it again once it gets active you can tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool Seat of the Synod is an artifact land from um, from a previous set and I'm trying to remember the previous set now my mind has gone blank anyway it taps for blue and it's also an artifact which makes a lot of sense in an artifact deck artifact heavy deck Terramorphic Expanse basically does the same thing as Evolving Wilds Transguild Promenade Transguild Promenade enters the battlefield tap. When Transguild Promenade enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you pay one. Add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. Temple of the False God. So this one taps for two colourless um, and activate the ability only if you control five or more lands. So what's interesting is in the case of uh, the artifact lands, I think that's the only one in there. I didn't job is when you're going through these sometimes you sort of miss stuff but that was the what the set I can remember that would have been from the original Mirrodin but you can see you know we've got we've got cards from Khan's block that fix for for three colors of mana we've got cards from <coughs> original Ravnica which fix for two um, and we've also got cards from shards block which also will uh, fix for, for three mana as well so there's lots of clever ways that um, wizards have chosen to to solve the the four color um, mana problem in this particular deck so there we have it there's our uh, invent superiority deck and um, it's the first first unboxing I'm going to do for Commander there's another another four of these to go and uh, let's try and get back to the main part here so you can see they've uh, they've uh, made a lot of cards in this deck rare or mythic but uh, again it, you know I, I'm not sure without going through this you know how that does how does that map back to the original rarity in their original sets uh, one thing I was looking for in an artifact deck um, I didn't see an awful lot of you know the sort of act of the artifacts that didn't necessarily fix for for colors um, I mean obviously if you were going to put those in this deck to, to modify it, you'd uh, you need to pull something out but uh, certainly it that'd be an interesting thing I think to look at is um, you know, there's been a number of artifacts through the history of magic, which which act as as uh, color fixers as well. And in, in an artifact deck, that might be something interesting to look at. Anyway, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.